<sighs> With February behind us, we're currently in the month of March. Which is how time works. Anyways, March is actually National Women's History Month. Which gave me an idea. This month, I will be discussing different women from different webtoon series. Talking about their character arcs, personality, so on and so forth. I was gonna open up with Hera, since most of you Lore Olympus fans have been asking me to talk about her. But I'll save the Queen of Olympus for the end of this little series. I have an idea of who I want to talk about for these four weeks, but if you have any suggestions for characters, please let me know. Now, I wanted to talk about a webtoon I very quickly fell in love with. Nice to meet you. I briefly talked about Nice to Meet You in my last month series when I talked about toxic types of love. But I didn't really get into the series that much and I didn't really ever get into the main character. Nice to Meet You is a slice of life romance webtoon series that follows Mew. Mew is a little bit different. And no, not in the way that I'm different from the other girls kind of way. Mew is much more... quirky. Our introduction to her is by her playing with her face on a window's reflection, with someone else on the other side. Our next moment with her is by her being a little bit of a trickster, by switching her student ID with another student's ID. At this moment, these two students are strangers, they don't know each other, so it's kind of a weird move to play. But she did it, as she explains, because it'd be funny. Lately, I've been so bored. I thought this was a good opportunity to spice things up. But we see that she really didn't think things too clearly. Due to her not having her ID, she can't take her test. This establishes a couple things on Mew. First, her name is the same as a legendary Pokemon, which can't be a coincidence, so it's important, trust me. But more importantly, Mew is a fun-loving person. She likes fun, harmless mischief and pranks. But she doesn't really seem to think things through. But also is amazingly full of expression. Like, the author does a good job of showing character expressions, but Mew's personality is very much on her sleeve. You know that expression? Wearing your heart on your sleeve? Eventually, everything does smooth over. And by smooth over, I mean she accidentally snaps the ID card. But notice when she makes her mistake. As goofy and fun-loving as Mew is, she understands that she messed up. She doesn't brush it off with a joke or uh, write it off as something funny that happened. She's willing to accept anything that she needs to do to make it right. Granted, she didn't need to kneel in front of the group and put her hands up like they were going to cuff her. But she does do that. Anyways, she ends up paying for the card instead of getting arrested. After that little hijinks, both parties start to notice each other a little more. Yeah, sure, Mew has always taken a very deep interest in Daze, as he was her muse. Meanwhile, Daze never really took an interest in anyone. But after seeing the... <laughs> absurdity of Mew's character, her goofy, lovable, and caring nature, is an interesting comparison to... basically everyone else. As when everyone else would turn a blind eye to a cat in trouble with some crows, Mew was willing to challenge her fear by saving said cat from a bunch of black birds that looked like they are about to kill everyone. Now, we do see that Mew wasn't always like the way she currently is. She wasn't always as goofy, lovable, caring, or brave. We hear from Simon, her childhood friend, she just wasn't as cheerful as when I first met her. She was always shy and would never look up or talk to anyone. When we went on a school camping trip, and she went missing for a whole day. When we found her, she became the Mew we all know now. Upbeat, adventurous, and just always cheerful. To this day, we still don't know what happened to her. There are people who hate her bubbly personality, but I don't mind it. Now, we don't really know what happens. At least not a lot of what happens. The story hasn't disclosed many details to us, but we do hear a little bit from Mew. You know, I wasn't always like this. I used to be a really gloomy kid. Until I met someone who told me attitudes are contagious. 
If you're sad, the people around you can sense that. Then they'll be sad. But if you're happy, they'll get those happy vibes too. Which does lead into Mew's personality. Her almost intoxicating happiness. To many other characters, it seems... fake, phony, like an act. Mew is way too happy for this to be real. In fact, this is a problem that characters like Simon, Days, and even Mew herself see. As she thinks, do I really come off as odd to people? It's not like this is the first time I've heard it. But she does later course correct herself. What am I doing? I shouldn't worry about what people think of me. I'm not the way I am for attention. It'd be crazy for me to avoid days just because of what two girls assume I am. You're gonna hear the term strong female lead a lot. By me, by other content creators, by large corporations or businesses. And it's a problematic term. You see, a while ago, media producers realized they can get a lot more money by promoting a strong female lead as their main character. They think that by pushing some big brain plays, they're doing something courageous by promoting a girl boss character. Now, while the character sometimes maybe works from time to time, there are surprisingly many problems with it. First, Disney. We didn't need a girl boss character with a villain who wanted to skin dogs. It's a weird play to pull, man. <sighs> but other bigger problems is the type they push. You know the one, the strong, unemotional, or little emotion character. The woman who doesn't care what anyone thinks and doesn't need anyone's help. She's strong and independent and doesn't need anyone. You can add more to that stereotype, and when used sparingly, it's a good type. But the problem comes when you only use that type of character. Only using that type of character, you don't push that female characters are just as strong and capable as male characters. You push that only that female character is just as strong and capable as male characters. Mew doesn't really fit into that basic girl boss character. She's very upbeat, adventurous, basically always cheerful. She's optimistic, happy. And that emotion is such an important aspect to her character. As that emotion makes her a great female lead. You see her strong emotions are both the cause and, more often than not, the solution to many of her and other people's problems. Like I've mentioned, she does come off a, a bit odd to many other girls. I've already mentioned the snide remarks she gets from other girls. But we do see a little bit about a past relationship that left her scarred. While we don't see a lot, it comes in glimpses. Mainly when Mew thinks about her past or thinks about getting into a relationship, but she does go on to talk about it with Wynn. Wine. He has a weird name that I think about it. Anyways... She goes on to say, I'm scared. I won't be able to control myself. I'll get really obsessed or too passionate. And I don't want what happened with my ex to happen again. I had a bad experience with my last relationship. It was senior year in high school, and he was really cute and dreamy. I fell head over heels for him. Like, hard. I was so head over heels for him that I'd do anything for him. She goes on to describe that he became the most important part of her life. Neglecting other aspects of her life, like her family, friends, or school. And that's just the romance aspect of her life. Her vibrant emotions, for lack of a better term, also cause her some troubles with social circles. For example, the character Leah. Laya. L Leah. I'm going to say it's Leah. Leah is very much a contrast to Mew. While Mew is upbeat, emotional, full of expression, caring, and other things, Leah isn't most of those. She's much more calm and shows next to no emotion. And she can sometimes be a little bit of a bully as she trash talks others. We can even go as far as compare their outward appearances. Ignoring the whole very emotional and not as emotional. Mew is shorter and described as plain. 
but is a cuter character compared to Leah's constant on display beauty, which isn't even really my words, as the webtoon series is constantly showing other men fawning over her, from classmates to customers. And we do see their personalities clash, as Leah is constantly confused about Mew's personality, wondering if it's a bid or an act. This does lead Leah to not really bully Mew, but trash talk her and mock her, eventually kind of exploding in her typical calm way, just kind of calling her a weirdo. It could have been very easy for this webtoon series to villainize Leah. Many other forms of media and even other webtoon series villainize their bullies. Look at Lore Olympus. Don't get me wrong, these series aren't wrong for villainizing them. Minty and Apollo are, more often than not, not good people. But nice to meet you takes a more realistic approach. Not every bully will be a villain. They're people. With their own goals, motivations, personalities, hopes, dreams, so on. And Mew was the perfect person for this. Her emotions cause her some problems, yes. But often they're the solution to many other problems. For example, after Leah explodes at Mew, Mew reaches out to Leah. And if I can finish her quote from before, I was tired of being so sad, and I didn't want my family worrying about me either. So I decided I needed to change my attitude. When I did, I felt even happier when I saw the people around me cheer up too. Seeing the people I care about smile makes me smile even more. I still get sad sometimes, but I don't let it get to me as much anymore. So I guess it's never too late to change for the better. Emotions get the best of us sometimes, but we're human. Mew is a strong female lead because she's emotional. It causes her problems, sure. They're the solution, more often than not. Mew uses her emotions to help others. She so reaches out to people who need that help. Even people who hurt her, like Leah or even Alex. These people hurt her, scared her, treated her poorly. Yet, she didn't take time to villainize them, treat them like the enemy, take revenge or anything. She forgave them and tries to teach them to become better. Tries to teach Alex to understand how to treat women and tries to teach Leah to become happier. Mew is such a great, well-written character. A uniquely optimistic, upbeat, caring person. Anyone can be strong. Even the most emotional character out there. That's why I like Nice to Meet You. It can feel a lot more realistic than other webtoon series. The characters there are treated like people. It's a lot of shades of grey, which I love when webtoon series do. But Mew herself is a great example of a female lead, a strong female lead. You see, more often than not, emotions are kind of treated like the enemy. They're treated like a problem that you must overcome, or like a power source for some reason. But we see Mew's character, someone who is 100% willing to let emotions overtake her. And that's never a problem. They never show it off as a flaw or a problem that needs correcting. They show it off as something important. And I think I love that. Even by the end of the series, we see Leah, the character from before, that kind of bully girl, start to become happier. Start to treat people with more respect because of Mew's emotions, because of her strong will. And I think it's such a great way to promote a different strong female lead. Someone who's constantly upbeat, adventurous, happy, excited, optimistic, and it's not a problem. Because that's people. Everyone is unique. Not everyone is a strong-willed, unemotional or emotionally in check warrior girl who's independent and doesn't need anyone, who doesn't care about what anyone thinks. It does a good job of promoting a different take on a character. Because when we promote other takes, we promote that any female lead can be strong, not just one or two types. But that's all for this week. I hope you guys are excited for this National Women's, whatever the, whatever I'm calling it, Women's, Women's Month. <laughs> I hope you guys are excited for this little series I have. I, I had it planned for last year. God, I've been here for a while. I had a plan for last year, but I was talking about Lore Olympus characters during it. 
so I couldn't really like talk about it. But I'm glad I'm doing it now. So let me know if you have any other female leads that I should talk about. And leave them in the comments below. But like always, thank you for watching. And I hope I'll see you next week.